In this video, I am very, very excited to be putting this 1958 Thames 400 E through its paces. It's got a custom body on it that was um, built in London. It worked in Blackpool, fascinating history. It has a three speed gearbox with a column gear change. There is a lot to cover here, but also we need to speak about what came before the Ford Transit, because it was this. So obviously this is not a factory body. This is a body by a company called Garner, and like many other companies at the time, did coach built conversions. And uh, a, a conversion like this was typically where you wanted a large volume of light weight. In this case, a, ba a bakery, but also they were built as laundry vans as well. We've got a sliding door so the driver can quickly get in and out, no seat belts to speed that along. But for safety reasons, we will be keeping the door shut. Uh, because you can actually just fall straight out and that's considered undesirable but yeah it's based on the 400e chassis it, in fact it came as a chassis windscreen uh, but uh, Garner removed the windscreen and just left the front panel as the original uh, Thames that's this bit so behind that cowl effectively at the front, a complete custom body with two piece windscreen and this big boxy um, body on top. In fact, I'll take you around the back, we can take it in more detail. It's made of a mixture of fiberglass and aluminium, so at least it isn't going to rust, unlike the original chassis. And uh, yeah, a fascinating bit of kit. Let's open up the hatch. There you go, it's on um, telescopic struts I don't know if it would have been originally and uh, a two-stage process I can uh, also lower this down and uh, its final use fittingly was as a mobile van and you can kind of see how it works people can come up to the back and have a look at what wares are on offer and make a purchase this one has actually been um, kitted out um, for the owner really so it's turned into something of a day van which I really like. He's got steps so he doesn't have to do this leap. But look at this, we've got a little sofa bed here that rolls out to turn into a full bed, a little kitchenette area, if you will. We've even got a handy um, stool for sitting on, coat hooks, and a little storage area up here above the cab. Maybe you'd hide your money there. There is a sliding side door as well, which means that the passenger side is quite different to the uh, driver's side continue going round and you'll see that the front door is not sliding on this side it is a conventional opening door like so and that's because it can't be a sliding door because if it was it would then clash with this door which um, gives some access to the side of the vehicle and if you're chucking stuff out onto the curb um, if you had to so quite a practical vehicle really there's a, an awful lot to it but uh, we'll get into driving impressions shortly. I just want to talk a bit about the badges on the front before we get too carried away though. You notice it says Thames. Uh, that was effectively Ford's truck division. And uh, the Thames badge was also applied to smaller light commercials like the Anglia van would often have a Thames badge on it until that was phased out towards the end of production of these, March 1965. These briefly became Fords and then they stopped making them all together later that month. So that was worth ordering the badges for. 15 refers to 100 weight. It's an imperial weight measurement not used so much these days. America might still use it, but they, of course, measure it differently. Uh, American 100 weight different to British ones. But the 15 is roughly three quarters of a ton. So that's the payload of the vehicle. Uh, as per the chassis design. Obviously the weight of the body um, takes something into effect as well, I guess. Now, this one's got the livery of Megan's Welsh Pantry. Um, I don't know if that's uh, a company it was working for for a time. Uh, the owner, Hayden, is trying to piece together the history of this vehicle. And uh, we don't know exactly how it ended up in Wales at all. It started life at a bakery uh, up in Blackpool uh, and then somehow found its way to St. David's in Pembrokeshire and it has kind of been there ever since. So I'm going to take you out of here and we can go and have a nose inside and walk through the controls. It's quite the experience. So the Thames on which this is based was a forward control vehicle and like the Transit, the Transit was what was called normal control because the Transit had the engine ahead of the driver. This is forward control which means the driver sits on the front wheels 
and the engine is under this hump here uh, i'll open it up in a moment but i'll clamber aboard and we can take in the controls so here we go lovely simple dashboard we've got a speedo and a fuel gauge and that's about it in terms of controls uh, hayden has fitted a headlamp flasher very sensibly there we've got the manual light control there side lights and then pull again for headlights uh, the ignition key here but no starter and uh, to the left we have not the indicator stalk this is the column gear change so first is towards and back let it ping down to the next level for second and third and reverse is up here uh, opposite first so free speed gearbox handbrake very much like a chevrolet corvair and other cars of that ilk a big robust handbrake lever uh, this is the indicator control here and if i just pop the ignition on it's worth doing that just because the indicator lights themselves are quite cute very nice and bright so we've got oil pressure up there at the top generator is your dynamo and then we've got the main beam warning as well uh, the main beam is operated by this little switch down here the classic dip switch very nice otherwise pedals fairly conventional but it's a mechanical link uh, on this throttle a mechanical link that goes all the way around here and then up into the engine bay so let's see if we can open this so there we go with the um, hump lifted uh, it's got its own stay just like the tailgate on many cars of this era we can find the engine a 1703 cc four cylinder straight out of a ford console we've even got the radiator in here with us as well so uh, must get nice and warm especially for the passenger who's sitting right next to the exhaust uh, i believe these engines were slightly detuned from the car so i'm going to ping up the bhp figure about here and or at least what i think it is but uh yeah it's certainly easier to work on and you stay dry because the engine is just there we can see a tiny little carburetor here uh, the spark plugs all down here yeah lovely i don't think it has a heater i think your proximity to the engine is it now i've just noticed you can even see the headlamps the headlamps are just there amazing and uh, if you're wondering what this is this is because the owner has very wisely fitted uh, a reverse camera so um, i can actually see what's behind me on this little camera here not very much at the moment and uh, further high-tech gubbins going on up here where we find the uh, stereo with single speaker uh, is fitted just because he does actually like this he has driven it uh, fairly recently to uh, uh, Landidno and uh, that was earlier this year back in May I think for the um, Landidno, Landidno um, Vintage Festival and uh, yeah he drove it all the way up we're down in South Wales that was quite the adventure I'm sure but yeah lovely little horn push does it work let's pop the ignition on oh yes that's a, a good friendly horn and uh, you're probably wondering about wipers so we will give them a test unfortunately there is no um, screen wash available to us has been converted to electric wipers originally like the console and zephyr zodiac of the era it would have had vacuum powered wipers which are um, how do you say rubbish but uh, there we go an, an interesting wiping performance uh, i think that would be leaving triangles of absolute chaos all over the place but uh, nonetheless, it does look very like the um, wipers fitted to the original vehicles in the brochure. Uh, pop the ignition off again. We don't want to cook the coil. But yeah, it's just a fascinating vehicle and a unique survivor. It is not for any more of these exist. Uh, possible, actually, I say that. I, there's rumours one was seen operating as late as 2012, but no one has seen it since 2012. So if you know of another one, do let us know. I'm sure this one would like to have a friend. Uh, yeah fascinating slice of um, history right here let's find out what it actually drives like right then let's see how uh, this goes so turn the key I, the choke and engine start are down here they're little buttons so just start the engine make sure we're in neutral how sweet does that sound uh, Hayden used to run a body shop down here in Pembrokeshire so he, he was easily able to restore this bodywork and uh, it's like wood frame in places aluminium fiberglass quite the job and uh, painted it up beautifully but it's clearly got an eye for mechanicals as well because this is running very sweet now i'm going to shut the door it actually latches back so you can 
lock it open but like I say when when you can't actually um, wear a seat belt uh, I think having some form of um, safety in mind is probably the way to go so we go into first gear no synchro mesh on first they did later introduce a four-speed gearbox and away we go oh and straight away we got a big speed hump to get over testing the suspension the suspension itself quite interesting the front is double wishbone uh, not the McPherson strut because there isn't really room for the strut to go so this is double wishbone which was then used on the Ford Cortina as well so into second let it pop down into second and away we go just check my blind spot over there She hasn't warmed up fully yet, so we've got a slight miss um, just as I'm opening the throttle. But it actually drives really well. I've never been able to drive one of these before, so I was kind of wondering what it would be like. Uh, the, but the Thames was very much um, Ford's attempt to um, keep up with the competition. Morris and Austin had front wheel um, Con forward control rather trucks and they wanted to go the same way so indicator right there and uh, come to a stop get first there we go it's gonna go all the way around this roundabout plenty of fan noise from that four cylinder engine we're gonna go all the way around here this road down towards Tenby and St Florence. St Florence and the machine? Who knows? It's a ribbon speedo I've just noticed. That's brilliant. A very robust linkage. I think the three speed had a better linkage setup. The four speed versions were known for uh, binding up the linkage. But yeah, this is a really jolly thing to drive, actually. It drives better than I think I expected. I'm told she's happy cruising at like 45, we'll do 50. That's 40. Already starting to get a little busy, really. So we won't push much beyond that. And it's not as noisy as I expected either. I was kind of expecting it to be deafening with the engine just there. This is someone who has driven a Citroen H van to Sweden and knows quite a lot about engine noise in vans. But this isn't too bad at all, to be honest. The, the handling is a little woolly, I'm going to say. Steering by a steering box, I believe. And it is a, a little vague. And to fight a little to maintain a straight course on what is quite a windy day. But yeah, quite a comfortable seat and a massive amount of interior space. Which is important if you're trying to sell goods to people. You want as many goods as you can fit in. So Ford did a lot of work to develop this model. But then you know, after a fairly short production run, 1957 through to 1965, replaced by the comprehensively different, or comprehensively even, different Ford Transit. The Transit lauded for being so much more car-like to drive. Right, we're going to take the road to Redbirth. Yeah, those fixed engine fans do make a lot of noise. Oh yeah, quite heavy steering as well. Oh no. Typical single track road, but then this cut this truck rather probably saw a lot of use on roads such as this. Uh, it wouldn't have been serving so much in the town, it would have been probably getting out to the people who were out of town to save them a journey. Bring the groceries to the person. So which of course is starting to become all the rage again these days. Yeah, the brakes need a good shove. A far more modern uh, Ford commercial there. 
But yeah, the Thames range went all the way up to full-size trucks. Oh, quite a big jump there, second to third. That's one reason more ratios were fitted. It was basically to fill the gaps. Because now we're going uphill in third gear. She's not loving life. This is surprisingly jolly. I'm really enjoying this. The column gear change is um, actually really, really nice. It's a very positive one. I used to have an Austin Westminster and that was not as good. Very, very busy this um, single track road, isn't it? It's all right, it gives me plenty of chance to get used to the controls. Now we have seen this van before. It was in my um, show report from the Tyvee Valley vintage show what an amazing show that was so if you haven't seen that yet Tyvee Valley that's T-E-I-F-I -I Valley wonderful show and this was one of many wonderful vehicles there I think we saw it again at the Pembrokeshire show which sounded surprising it's very close to where it lives yeah we'll use the engine braking because the uh, foot brake not the strongest. Imagine what it's like with three quarters of a ton in the back. Oi. The pedals aren't too badly set for a bit of heel and toe. Cheeky. That's right, you don't bother indicating. This is a surprisingly jolly way of getting around. I don't think I expected this to be quite so nice to drive. And uh, such an amazing survivor as well. It got so close to being scrapped, but thankfully it was listed on Facebook uh, after the previous owner died. And uh, that's where Hayden spotted it and was able to save it. And thank goodness he did, because this is a wonderful slice of history. And I love that he's got the back kitted out with his sort of day van kind of layout that's brilliant because that means he uses it in fact i think they're using it this weekend to go to pembrey for the truck racing i don't think they're competing but this is quite clever got a little pull down blind some blind so he's a, a very clever chap he's fitted a number of things to make this more practical and you might be going oh well, that looks wrong because that's not from the 1950s it matters not do what you need to use the vehicle I love it. So yeah, it's, this isn't one for um, hoofing down motorways, but on, on the, these sorts of roads where it would have served, it's kind of perfect. It's a good size without being too big. You wouldn't want an actual truck. You just want a van with a big body attached to it. In fact, there's probably a bit more space in here precisely because it's a coach-built body. It's probably more spacious than an original Thames. The original Thames deliberately um, had uh, normal opening front doors they didn't go for sliding doors whereas the rivals from the likes of Austin and Morris I think did have sliding doors pros and cons to both I guess one of the new 20 mile an hour speed limits Oh, this is one of those drives I don't really want it to end. I think I would quite happily drive around in this for another couple of hours. But nonetheless, the owner probably wants it back, to be fair. Yeah, handling not its forte, but it's a van. It doesn't need to handle. So hopefully next year, um, Pembrokeshire Classic Car Club will come back here to Carew Airfield. It's a lovely location. 
and there's an interesting little RAF museum here as well so uh, it's well worth a visit oh what an amazing vehicle and uh, it's running so so beautifully as well very very sweetly so uh, huge thanks to Hayden for letting me drive this delightful van I hope you've enjoyed that and I shall see you in a future video no pachu because I'm just going to drive off bye In this video, something a bit special. I'm going to be putting this Ford Thames uh, uh, thing. Thing? What's this? It's a thing.